Hello everyone, it's Chelsea from Paper Octio Studio. Today I'm sharing with you my December Jeannie B. Aaron's Designs Design Team Project. Our theme this month is gifting and our task was to make a little gift for everyone on the team. You know, we've been working together all year. There's eight of us total if you include me. And so we're all to make something um, some sort of a gift and send it off. Well, I haven't sent mine yet. And so I don't want to show you the gifts that I made just yet. I'll have another short video towards the end of the month that has the gifts that I made. But I wanted to show you the little packaging that I did um, to put the little gifts in. They're small and so they fit inside of a fairly small little gift bag. So I decided to make the gift bags using Gina's stencil designs and a gel plate. Now what I'm making them out of is envelopes, just plain old envelopes. You can get them at the dollar store. They would be the business size envelope. So it's like the long flat one that will fit a triple folded piece of regular paper to fit inside. So that's what I'm making them out of. That's what I'm gel printing. So I'm gonna, I've sealed all the envelopes shut and I am printing the fronts and the backs. So I've got a few stencils out. I think I used four different stencil designs on these. And the first thing that I'm doing is putting, um, I'm, well, I wanna go with holiday colors. So I've pick, I'm picking red and green, and then I'm picking also blue and purple because to me, those colors represent winter. And so you don't always have to go with the red and green. You can go with some other colors. One time I decorated my tree in purple and silver. <laughs> that was a weird, wild thing that I did. It was before kids. But um, yeah, I think purple fits in to holiday colors as well. Um, it kind of had a resurgence at some point. So I decided to start with the red and green and I put some green down on the plate. I'm using the Arteza acrylic paints today. Um, they're great. They're great for doing gel printing, in my opinion. They're a good price. They're well pigmented, and they are the right consistency for what I use on my gel plate here in Arizona. Not not too quick drying that they dry up. Um, they have kind of a, a body to them, so not fillers in them, just nice, good pigmented paint. I'm very happy with them. So put the color down first. And of course now I've moved on to the next one, but I, and the first one I put green and then I put the stencils down, pulled out the green from inside the stencils using a piece of used deli paper. These are the pieces that I put um, under my projects when I'm working on the camera because my camera makes the glass plate that I have underneath. Um, shine it makes it glare and so I always put deli paper down and then I just save those and gel print them on them or use them for um, collage paper by using excess paint and stuff like that but the process back to the process putting a color down putting the stencils over it um, all the stencils that Gina ha Gina has are um, six by six so they don't fit the whole eight by ten plate this is an eight by ten so I have to put multiple stencils on, but that's fine. Then once I get the paint out of all the holes of the stencil, then I put a different contrasting color in with my smaller um, brayer, making sure to get it in there. And uh, this one had red in the background and then green in the holes. Another one had green in the background, red in the holes. And then I just put the envelopes down over them and press them down. I use another piece of uh, scratch paper, deli paper to uh, make sure that I don't get my hands all dirty. And you don't get multiple poles with this. Um, I guess the step that I forgot to mention is that once, okay, let's watch it again. Green down. <laughs> You've seen me do this before. I'm sorry I'm doing a terrible job of explaining. Stencils on. Then pull the color through the stencils using scratch paper. And I save those pieces for other uses as well. I use them in collage and stuff. So I never waste anything. 
then put another color and I'm using more than one color tone like in this case I use a red and orange um, at some point I even put some yellow in I think oh that that time I used the rose color so they're complementary colors but more than one put them in the holes with the small brayer and then take the stencils off and then at this point after the after I clean the stencils a little bit onto my scratch paper this is fairly dry and then I put a neutral color which on all of these I used white white was the same color as the envelopes so um, this is fairly dry now not completely dry in some cases I added some uh, marks with a little tube if there was like a lot of empty space and then I put that very thin layer of white over the top and that's what adheres to all the stuff I've put on there up to this point and then that helps it to come off the plate and stick onto my envelopes so um, we can watch this again because I'm doing it over and over but uh, this is a really favorite process of mine I like to build my layers up on the gel plate and then pull them all at once with white paint instead of layering color after color on top of the same print and that's like that's a difference between what I see a lot of people do a lot of people will throw a stencil on there take a print pull the stencil off take another print and then now they've got a something solid color and they will go and then print another color over the top that's not the way that I like to work with the gel plate I like to do all my layering onto the plate let it dry out and then pick it all up after the fact with a neutral color sometimes the neutral color shows sometimes it does not it depends on how fast I work <coughs> excuse me so I'm still got, I'm still working with the reds and greens this time I, the red is the background and the green is the the holes put the white on there then get my envelopes now I'm making seven gift bags because I have seven gifts so I have to keep doing this until I've done the fronts and the backs of all seven and and yes there is an envelope flap that's glued down on the back but you don't even notice once they're gel printed you don't even notice so I think I did four red and green and three blue and purple so I'm showing you both sides I think they look pretty cool they're kind of interesting patterns with kind of a little bit of a grunge effect I just I think it I like that type of print that's my favorite so now I'm switching colors I'm moving to the blues and purples um, I've got you know multiple different tones of colors in this Arteza set it has a lot of nice colors in it I've had it for a long time I still haven't used it all up I've used a ton of it for gel printing and I'm, I still have some left in the, the tube so I do need to clean it up one time we'll just have a, a big gel printing session on the live stream or something and just you know go through the whole thing so I did want to tell you these are Gina B Aaron's design stencils you can purchase them on her Etsy shop and there's a link below the video to her shop you can also use the the coupon code shell 15 shel15 to get a 15 percent discount after you've watched this video if you would like to go purchase some products from her for your your Christmas fun this year um, she has stencils she has stamps she has digital designs she's got other things um, just little all kinds of different things um, her own art prints different things like that so go over there check out her um, store and pick up something for yourself or something for someone else so this time I put the blue down first and then the stencils and then I filled in with purple and then um, picked everything up with white I probably could have done this a little bit faster if I'd used my larger plate because I could have fit two envelopes across on my 12 by 12 plate but I didn't want to get it out I just this one was already out from a different day and I just oh, I'm not gonna open another package and ugh, I just I'm tired I have so many things to do I'm going out of town I need to get things done I didn't want to mess with it so I just went ahead and um, 
you know, made a few extra, extra times around to um, do it with the 8x10. It doesn't matter. It all looks cool. It really doesn't matter. Just got to get all, both sides of all the envelopes printed with uh, Gina's stencils and my gel plate. That time purple down, blue in the holes. Here comes the white. So I hope you're all excited about the holidays coming up and you've been doing some making. Um, I really believe that making your own gifts, whether it's cards, whether it's, you know, some, some other craft that you can do, whether it's baking and making, you know, cookies and treats for the neighbors and things like that. I think all that thing is, all those things is very, um, a very valuable thing to do to, um, show you love someone is making something for them is, is the best way to do it. Oh, that one's all done. Oh, that one's halfway done. <laughs> one more time. One more time. I know some of you really enjoy watching gel printing, so I hope you're learning something from this. Uh, this is a fun way to gel print, in my opinion. I picked out some of my favorite stencils. I have a lot of uh, genus stencils, but I particularly like that triangular one and uh, this one that I think is called seeds but to me it looks like coffee beans that's probably that's the, probably one of the first ones I got from genus stencils and I really like that stencil a lot I think it's called seeds coffee beans <laughs> I also really like the color wheel um, stencil that she has. That's my other favorite. But I didn't use it on this this time. I didn't use it. So I'm adding a few other little purple circles um, with a paper tube mark making tool because there's a few holes, you know, where the edges of the stencil end and one stenc another stencil begins. Sometimes you get some spaces. So this is the last uh, print and I'm gonna move on to the making of the, the gift sacks. Show you how to do that, it's real simple. But you might not have thought of it and you probably have some envelopes, some of these envelopes around. You can use the smaller ones too, uh, same process. You could also use um, like wrapping paper and just fold it, fold it so that there's a seam in the back and then you can do the same process. So make sure that everything's sealed. I went ahead and sealed the edges of the flaps down because this, the glue on this particular envelope only goes, doesn't go all the way to the ends on both sides. And then this is a cutting, a Fisker's cutting thing, but I also have a scoring blade on it. So Fisker's does make a scoring blade that goes along with their cutters. And I'm using that to score, um, just lining up along the edge of the, um, the, the cutter. I didn't, I don't know, it's probably three quarters of an inch maybe. It doesn't have to be three, to three quarters of an inch. It just was easy because of where the side, where I could line it up with the side of the, the cutter. It made it easy. And then I'm using a bone folder to make sure that my creases fold in both directions and are very creased. And then I cut one of the short ends of the envelope off with some decorative shears. You could just do it with regular scissors. Uh, you could even tear it to make an interesting top, but I just used some uh, zigzag decorative shears. And then I open the envelope and fold in the sides and the bottom. So I've scored it three on the both sides and the bottom. I fold all those in and open it up and it makes a bag. And then on the bottom portion, there's these two little uh, triangular shapes that stick out. I fold those in and glue them down. And that's all there is to it to make this little gift bag. It's so easy. Um, 
maybe that sounds confusing, but once you do it a couple times, it's just, it's easy. It's easy peasy lemon squeezy. Just make sure that you've got good creases on all three sides, the two long sides and the one short side that you didn't cut. I actually cut after the fact, I think. No, I did cut this one in beforehand. Then open it up, push those little, all the little sides in, the V's in on the both sides and the bottom. And then you just end up with these two little triangular pieces. See how they're sticking out? And I just fold them into the bottom and glue them down. So now those are on the bottom. If you, if you look at a paper sack, this is exactly what a paper sack looks like. That's how it's constructed. It's very, very easy to do. Then I'm folding down the tops, folding over the decorative side and punching a couple holes so that I can thread ribbon through it. And then I had these already die cut tags. You could just make tags yourself by cutting a rectangle. Um, it's these ones happen to have rounded corners, so you could use a, a corner biter, corner rounder tool if you wanted to. And I have these little leftover pieces that I cut off the tops of the bags, and I'm going to use them as a decorative accent on the tags as well, so that they they match and coordinate it, you know, with with the bags. So I'm just trimming the other side because these were cut with the decorative shears I trim the other side the same and then glue them down on the end of the tag and then I have some alphabet stamps there's all kinds of alphabet stamps these ones happen to be from Stampin' Up but they're discontinued um, they're not around anymore you might be able to find them on eBay and I'll, I'll put in the description box below which ones they are if you want to try to find them on eBay but otherwise they're not available but I have the upper and lower case and so I decided to stamp uh, everybody's name, yeah, starting with Gina, <laughs> Gina, then Cindy, then Peg, then Margell, or, or Margell, and then um, Wendy, and Leslie, and Vicki. Those are all my teammates for this year's fun design team. So this is the last month for me. I won't be on the design team anymore next year. So... This is the 12th project, 12th project, 12th video. So then I sponged around the edge. I'm using my archive links because they were easy to find. And I also get out one of the stamps from one of Gina's stamp sets that has some little like sparkles, like little X shaped sparkles and stamp those on the tag as well. And then I have a coordinating tag that matches. I get some ribbons that match thread them through the two holes that I punched at the top and then thread on that tag and that's a cute little gift bag to put my little gift in. So watch out for uh, the video coming towards the end of the month after I've mailed these that um, shows you what I put in the bags with the little gift that I made to put in the bags. I just I wanted it to be a secret until they get it. So yeah. I hope you enjoyed this. If you have, please remember to give it a thumbs up. Leave me a comment or question below. Subscribe if you haven't already. Turn on your notification bells if you're not getting notifications. And of course, you can share this on Pinterest or Facebook. And if this is your last video for today, please click over to someone who has a bazillion subscribers and views so that I don't get punished for you leaving YouTube off my video. And that is it for me. And also don't forget your coupon code SHEL15 to get 15% off. And the link to Gina's Etsy shop is below the video along with the products that I used in all the links. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.